All right, so today we have the lovely Yosef joining us and he's gonna share with us his little secret to his healing journey. So we've been working together for about a month now and I think, well, first of all, um, his mindset and what he's been working on or the number one thing that he's been doing every single day that's been really helpful in his journey will be helpful for other people. And I think a lot of people will be able to relate to his journey of the trial and error and, you know, not being able to speak to family and share that experience with him um, will be really relatable. So thank you for taking the time to have a chat. Thanks for, thanks for having me on board. Thanks for um, yeah, giving me the opportunity to share, share what I've kind of experienced over the last, you know, six weeks working with you. So, yeah. uh, which, which will be good for people that are starting out and, um, you know, getting into it and, you know, it's not like the start and the end. This is kind of like what's midway through it and what's happening. So, you know, I know it can be a daunting process, but there's a, uh, yeah, there's, there's light, there's light on the other side. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, totally. And that's a, yeah, that's a big thing for you is <laughs> just the process. Um, but yeah, before we dig deep into all of that, um, yeah, can you just give, I guess, introduce yourself and then give a little background on your journey with your skin, the trial and error, and what life was like pre starting the healing journey? Yeah, so pretty much, um, yeah, I live in, I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and um, I'm an electrician by trade, um, outdoorsy person, like Alicia's probably said, and Love my fishing, love my boating, love playing sport, love my soccer. So for me, um, yeah, obviously having to battle with eczema for a while is, you know, kind of not ideal, especially, you know, given my lifestyle. So, um, yeah, my history with it is kind of the classic, the same as a lot of other people as a child growing up, um, just managed with topical steroids. And it was always hidden to a point that, to a point where, um, now that I speak about it with people, they were like, oh, did you actually have eczema? Like, did, were you battling that? They didn't even know because it was that well hidden and that well maintained and managed that people don't know. But it's kind of got out of control in the last two, two and a half years. And then kind of it's had me digging really deep and, you know, searching for a kind of, um, you know, the, the shortest and quickest answer possible, you know, just to, just to be healed. And through a lot of trial and error, um, I've noticed that you know, short and easy and quick isn't quite what's going to you know, be the long lasting um, solution. So, yeah, um, it's, been, it's been a really you know, tough battle for the last yeah, two and a half years, but a big part of it has actually been stepping out of my comfort zone. Yeah, even just doing these interviews way out of my comfort zone, I would never actually see myself doing this, but um, that's probably one of the biggest things is yeah getting out of your comfort zone and yeah. relating back to that speaking with family and opening up to people that I wouldn't normally do um that's actually been a, a huge stepping stone for me so um yeah yeah it's and that's a the, big one because I think a lot of people have eczema and like I was the same my friends are like when I started talking about it on social media because for me as well at the beginning I was like I was off social media for ages and then um, I was like, oh, I have to start sharing my story. And people were like, I didn't realize you had eczema. And this is common conversation between most people with eczema because we're just really good at hiding it. So if you have a flare up, you just wear a long sleeve. Or if you have a really bad flare up, you just cancel plants. So you're just good at hiding yourself, your rashes and yourself in the world. So yeah, and a big part of it is talking about that experience and not holding everything in always, you know, your whole life and just being isolated and alone so well done for stepping outside your comfort zone <laughs> yeah uh, thanks thanks for being that that help that kind of the um yeah that i've been looking for this whole time and it was that was the missing link is the missing link was actually working with somebody that's actually gone through it and experienced it mm -hmm. um just like the rest of us are experiencing or you know have experienced so yeah. um knowing that you know there's people out there that do understand rather than you know people that don't understand so such as your, your general doctors and dermatologists so 
Yeah. Yeah. Can you give a bit of a background on um, the things that you had tried and a bit of that trial and error? So just give me one second. So I don't know what's happening there. And actually a funny, I remember when we first spoke, um, you're like, I saw your emails coming through and they were always going to my junk. And you're like, I thought you were just trying to sell me, you know, some sort of spam. <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's like, no offense. <laughs> I'm like, no, I never take any offense. But <laughs> it's sorry, it's sorry. Um, there. <laughs> you're back. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that was that was funny. That was um yeah. <laughs> that was always you know, if you um like you said the um you know, when you when you're searching looking for something you'd be amazed, you know, how many things pop up in your social media and you know, just scrolling through the internet and stuff and all the relatable things because you know um that's that's the power of technology these days. But yeah, that uh, for me it was classic started off going to a GP give you top, topical steroids topical steroids you got eczema there's no cure topical steroids yeah no worries and then obviously they started getting you know less effective over time so you you're um you know obviously searching for other avenues searching for answers um you know they'd recommend you to a dermatologist to a specialist dermatologist to do the same thing so yeah oh, I saw some dermatologists and then they went down the path of allergy you know, patch testing and um, yeah, doing, doing other little tests um, like blood tests and stuff like that. And we came to some conclusions such as, you know, having a sensitivity to um, SLS and you know, other um, uh, products they put in cosmetics and shampoos and whatnot. And that's that's when we went to a, got to a standstill there, and um, obviously I've never been I never reacted to anything like that in my past, and I never had these problems. So I was scratching my head as to why why all of a sudden is you know why am I sensitive to this stuff now? Um, and then I had a suspicion that there was some food related intolerances, so I cut out gluten, cut out dairy, you know, all the classic stuff. Did a bit of intermittent fasting, um, a keto diet all of the above yeah. and I was always back to square one. I was coming back to square one. It was just a massive, just circle. And I did see some relief sometimes, yeah. um, but it would have been just like the stars aligning, you know, a combination of environment, stress levels um, and all that sort of stuff. So, and then like, like you were just saying, I did see your um, emails come through and, you know, your, <laughs> your things pop up on Facebook, your videos. And I was like, yeah, it's too good to be true. It was, yeah, I've seen too much of this stuff, and yeah, yeah, I think it's just not another one of those marketing things. And yeah, to not no offense to you, like we spoke <laughs> about it. <laughs> we had a laugh. <laughs> and then one day, I just I said, "Enough's enough. I have to, I have to try something different." And then that's when I reached out to you, and I, was, you know, expressed my kind of my battle with eczema and where I was at. Yeah. And yeah you've given me some hope and some kind of inspiration that, you know, there's, there's a way to get better without all this, all this stuff that's actually sending us backwards, you know, i.e. topical steroids and these diets that are just doing more harm to us than good. So. Yeah. Yeah. And cause you also like you did traditional Chinese medicine, you went to an eczema clinic and so it wasn't for a lack of trying. And so you were definitely on yeah. the natural route, but there was just missing pieces of the pu missing pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. yeah. And I said the same thing to that guy at the at the eczema and psoriasis clinic that I did go to. Um, I said that I don't want to be using steroids for the rest of my life because obviously, if you do research on you know the harm that they do, yep. and I do think I did experience a little bit of TSW when I did that Chinese um, medicine, uh, which is what they kind of. Um, uh, kind of target that that's their that their their remedies and their form of healing so and he was surprised he didn't know what was going on so I don't think he had much of an idea about TSW either but um, you know, fingers crossed and you know touch wood I don't I'm not going down that path which you know some people do which is um, quite unfortunate and you know I can just imagine how bad it, bad it is but um, 
bouncing back off that little bit of TSW flair, I know that there is kind of, you know, you do get better from it, you know, it's just, it's just a, um, yeah, a kind of, you know, a part of the road, a part of the journey yeah. that, you know, you have to get over. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause we weren't sure at the beginning because of the topical steroid use that you had been using. Cause that was, that was your crutch. Cause you had to work and you just have to like, you're in survival mode, right? You're just trying to get by. So um, yeah, we just took it literally one day at a time, spoke every week and just, yeah, we're at a point now where we think we're in the clear, which is, which is really good. Um, um, yeah. Even so it was yeah. just like, okay, what are we going to do if this happens? And then just, yeah, taking it one step at a time. And um, one part, so part of your journey, which we briefly spoke about was being able to open up with your family. So I remember you saying that your family is quite conventional and very loving and, you know, want, wanted you to get better, um, but really believed in that conventional medicine approach. Can you t tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so opening up to my family was a, was a massive thing. I know I spent about, I reckon, just before beginning the program with you, I think it was about three weeks I spent in my bedroom, locked away. Um, you know, not wanting to come out, yeah. not seeing anybody, not even, you know, chatting to my best mates and my family. And the only person that I did see was my fiance and she was kind of the rock in all of this. She was, you know, yeah. um, probably, you know, what got me out of a pretty dark place just prior to starting with you. And um, obviously she was kind of the face to my own family. She was, you know, the communication between me and my own, my own mum. So, um, yeah, that was, yeah, getting kind of, getting that out off my chest to the rest of my family was, you know, who's deeply into the, you know, what's, what you're wasting all your money on all, all these diets, you're wasting all your money on this food, you're wasting, you're wasting all your money on all these you know, different supplements and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and they just think that, yeah. You, you, you've got eczema, you need to deal with it with creams, you need to deal with it with steroids. There's no other way. So that was, yeah, kind of, yeah, working with you just even in the last three or four weeks when I've seen some really good, good results, um, them seeing those results has actually opened their eyes to like, my mum was saying to, she was saying to my fiance, she said, you know, he, he, these, these diets aren't going to work for him. She's always, even as a kid, she was the one that was prescribed these these topical steroids for me, you know, mm -hmm. and applied them to me. And she's kept that mindset pretty much throughout the last twenty years of my life, so twenty five years. Yeah. So now that she's seen the results, you know, of being able to heal naturally, she's completely changed her her mindset and her attitude towards me, and has actually been even more supportive than you know what she was because yeah. I wasn't receiving much much support, but I knew that you know if with or without support, I was going to get through this. So, um, yeah, and like I said, opening up to people and them kind of, um, you know, obviously they're like, oh, where have you been? You know, you've been quiet. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you're not responding to any text messages or calls. And then now I've been actually able to finally open up and they're like, oh, do you have eczema? Did, did, were you, you know, were you going through? They had no idea what I was going through. So, yeah. And I and I'd call myself quite reserved in that department. You know, I'd like to try and believe that it's not true and that I'm not going through it. But you have to wake up to the reality and actually face that before you can even progress in you know in any in any kind of way. So yeah. that's a big key to progressing. Yep. Is is starting from the very start and actually opening up about it and actually identifying what's wrong. So identifying that there's a problem there. So yeah, yeah. hiding yeah. it doesn't help. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that because I mean, I think every single person with eczema can uh, relate to that. And it is, yeah, it's a heavy burden to carry on your own for your whole life. You know, you're hiding a piece of you, like literally your skin. And it's just so common for, you know, most people that I work with with eczema, now I have, you know, a big database of people and I see a lot of commonalities and it is 
people that are more reserved or they're holding in their emotions or, and like, I was very much like you as well. Oh, it's so like, I can just get through this, you know, don't share it with anybody. And like, you have this like harder exterior um, that everything's going to be okay. But at one point it's like, okay, it's not. And about it, it is about acceptance and just, yeah, t- sharing your story. And it's, it's, it's like a weight lifted off your chest. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. Definitely, definitely a massive weight of the shoulders. And that's, that's been a, a key to what's kind of helped me. So that's, um, yeah, like we're just speaking, you know, just before the chat about the emotional kind of, um, you know, response and, you know, the, the areas that it, that it targets, such as your neck, like, yeah. you know, yeah. you wouldn't think that um, an emotional kind of um, a problem would would surface on, you, on your skin and, you know, appear on the outside. You think that it's kind of bottled up and, you know, Think you have things like anxiety and stuff like that and you know that would be you know the repercussions of emotional stress but it actually um yeah there's other forms that it likes to show itself such as on the skin totally and this is where eczema gets more confusing for people because you know it's the common trajectory where with creams try that diets try that okay now what and it is so many different things, right? You know, I mean, the allergies too and environmental stuff, but the biggest part of it for every single person with eczema is the emotional part of it. And if that's not dealt with, you're going to do the gut protocols, you're going to do supplements, you're going to do diets, but you'll always, always, always be back at square one if you don't deal with that. And that's the the brain skin connection. And most people can, I don't know if, if they're in tune with their body, they can um, feel that when they get stressed or anxious, they can feel that itch and that's that stress. Um, eczema cycle so part of dealing with it and again holding your emotions in like when you like when we talk to Karen the psychotherapist she, when you describe it it's about lacking boundaries and bottling emotions up and then eventually from the brain skin connection and the psychotherapy part of it it's when your emotions rise to the top and if you think of it relating that back to the body your nervous system is connected to every organ in the body so if that is tight and unregulated you're never going to be in a state to heal. So very important piece of the puzzle and getting the body in a state to heal is exactly what you're talking about. Addressing that, talking about it um, and having an open space like where we're talking about things and taking a big step for you today, uh, talking about it on here, even though you're only a month in or six weeks in. So it's, it's hard to come on and talk about things when a lot of times we have expectations that we need to be this way to be saying and doing things. So I really want to honor you for coming on and talking about it midway through. Yeah. Big step. Thanks. Yeah. And um, another thing I want to reiterate, you know, in line with that is the one thing that I learned is you actually got to fall in love with the process yeah. and not with the product you know, concentrate on what it takes to being healed rather than actually being healed. And, you know, sub, it's just, it's going to be like, you'll do things like that, you know, unconsciously it, it's just going to become like second nature and then you're going to realize all these one percenters that yeah. you put in um you know it's and it's not it's not like one day you wake up and you know you don't like your skin's clear it's, it's definitely not like that yeah but it's um yeah one percent each day you know goes a long way and that's what you've been so, so good at yeah it's just like okay tell me what needs to happen i'll do it being consistent and letting go of, okay, I need to have clear skin right away. Cause that doesn't happen. And that can keep you in that cycle of being stressed out, flare up, but observing, okay, this is happening with my skin. Even when we get on calls during the week, you're so in tune with your body that you're like, oh, I can see that I'm, I'm reacting to being around other people. And that's normal because it can trigger your emotional response. So for you, it's like, okay, regulate your body after a call. And like every day, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to get outside, go to try and jump in the water, go for a bike ride. So yeah, just following the process and celebrating wins, like, you know, having a full or having a full night's sleep three nights in a, in a row. And it's not clear skin, but that's going to lead to clear skin, which is the important part of the process. Yeah. yeah. Definitely my, um, yeah. There's been a lot of aspects to my life that have improved. So yeah, sleep being one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah relationships being another one yeah. and yeah and and i've never been an anxious person or an emotional person like my, like i've never not never seen that in my life i've never um yeah i've never 
being caught up in, in the emotional aspect of things, but you do realize what, um, what kind of feelings and stuff and, you know, things you develop over time, you know, especially when you're going through such a tough battle. Um, and then, you know, opening up is actually kind of the way to, to break free of that. And yeah, there's a lot of things you'd be surprised to you don't know about yourself until you have to, until you have to deal with them and, um, you know, find a way to, to get over them. Cause that's part, another part of the, you know, the journey that's actually, you know, that you're going to benefit from. So. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a big one because like you said before, at the beginning of the call, we're always going to go back to our comfort zone and what's easy. It's your nervous system. It's always going to want to be comfortable. And that's the point of the nervous system, right? But what's not comfortable is doing something different and that's changing, but that's, that's what leads to growth. And if you can backtrack to any life event, there was discomfort, but then there was, you gained either new skills or, you know, resilience in some way. And that's what makes change. So it's, it's, yeah, it, it's cool. It's just so nice to see the journey that you're on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it does. yeah I, I wouldn't have expected to, you know, I, I didn't actually know what to expect coming into it. And, and you know, it's, it's a lifestyle change. There's a lot of aspects of my lifestyle that I've changed and, you know, just waking up at the same time every morning, you know, watching the sunrise, yeah. getting into a routine, having a shower, things that, you know, before I started with you, I was like, oh, my skin's, my skin's hurting. I don't feel well. Like, you know, I don't want to get out of bed because that's where I'm comfortable. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have a shower because it might like irritate my skin. Yeah. But I've learned that actually, yeah, getting out of that comfort zone, getting out of that cycle of comfort yeah. is, has actually been you know, a game changer. So, yeah. 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 So many is... cool pearls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Follow up Actually, one, I, got, yeah. I did okay. catch up with some, um, I catch up, I caught up with a workmate the other day mm -hmm. and he hadn't seen me for about six, probably five, yeah, five or six weeks. And he's, he's like, I didn't want to tell you when I saw the other day, but you're actually looking so much better. So obviously physically people knew that, you know, yeah. I was, I was going through something. Um, and that was prior to me actually opening up about it. But, you know, the, yeah, the proof is in the pudding, I guess. And, you know, when people know what you're on, they can see the change. Yeah. When they know what you're going through, they can see the change too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm not by no means doing this for anybody else. I'm doing it for myself. And, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to know that, you know, people can notice that there's a change too and that the answer is not just the short term yep. um you know antibiotics steroids yeah there's yep. another there's another way yeah and that's the thing it's always understanding like exactly the path that you're on why okay so i'm using these steroids but it's not fixing it okay why why am i getting infections what's wrong with my body you know why am i not able to fight this off myself why was i you know able to at one point and now I've gotten to the point where there's so much dysfunction infections all of that so yeah it is and the thing is is that you know everything that you're doing day to day you have beautiful routines um morning and night and you're you know in the process of like cooking and enjoying it and it's all about creating lo like long-term sustainable changes right it's not about just being in the program and doing the things now you are creating a, a blueprint for yourself that you'll use for the rest of your life and you don't have to be strict all the time, but you know, if you do like, you'll get to the point where you can go camping and you don't have to be as stringent, but if you ever get to a point where you do feel like you're outside and maybe there's allergies and you do get a bit of an itch, you know exactly what to fall back on because you know the process that works for you now. And that's, that's a weight off your shoulders, like just in life, just having that confidence Definitely. that you can get to this point. Yeah. Definitely. Like I was saying, you know, I want to be able to go on a camping trip and just pack you know, a toothbrush and floss. Yeah, that was it. It's such a lot of else. And because the tail gets stuck in my teeth, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was it, yeah. And you'll also be packing kale. <laughs> yeah, packing kale, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Well, thank you so much for hopping on and having a chat. Um, if anybody who's on the live, I've been watching, has any questions um, or if anybody can relate to you and say, let us know. Um, 
And if you are in the journey um, and you are interested in starting the healing journey and understanding what the root cause is and be on a beautiful journey like Josep, um, drop a let's chat below and me or one of the team will reach out um, and help you get you started on your journey. Um, are there any last words of advice or anything else that you would like to share with us? Yeah, my one piece of advice would be, yeah, be patient and concentrate on concentrate on the process. Yeah, don't concentrate on, um, you know, being free from, from having eczema because having that expectation is only going to be a burden. So, um, yeah, have realistic expectations and know that it does get better, but patience and, yeah, the process process is the process is the key because if you get if you get the process right then everything else just falls in line so yeah and just having yeah. such a healthy mindset around that is definitely yeah is, is a crucial part of the process so thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom thank you very much thanks for having me and um yeah if one person can take a positivity out of this then it's a job well done so yeah yeah i'm only giving back what i um what i take so and thank you for stepping outside your comfort zone. Well done. <laughs> yeah, nice. um, yeah, still got a lot of work to do, but you know, looking forward to it, and you know, it's keeping me motivated. So yeah, and it's the process. <laughs> the process. process. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay.